Hi everyone and welcome to Wild Things. Well, when we hear the word snake, most of us cringe and run away in fear. Not so the Doyle family. Having been bitten over 19 times by snakes, Gane Doyle from the West Australian Reptile Park is certainly no stranger to life-threatening situations. But have you heard of snake bite actually helping your health? We're here to tell us a little bit about that interesting story and to introduce us to some reptilian friends, uh, Gane Doyle Jr and Gane Doyle Sr from the West Australian Reptile Park. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Thank you for now, Gane, tell me, you went into hospital, you were bitten by a snake, and it helps your health. How, how does that work? Well, they then picked up a brain tumour from that. Goodness me. But there was, there was a downside to it. Mm. They did the operation for the brain tumour and that was quite okay. Brilliant, excellent. But they then allowed infection into the brain. Oh, goodness. Which has left me with a disability okay. on my right arm. But you are here to tell the tale, I am and you've here been bitten more than 19 times. That's truly incredible. Oh, that's incredible. right. Yes. <laughs> uh, getting uh, diagnosed for a brain tumour is one of the yeah. hardest things of that people have. Mm. It creates all sorts of problems. I'm sure, but these snakes definitely keep you busy and keep you out of trouble. Can you tell us a little bit about the animals you've brought in today? Oh, yes. Uh, this one here, uh, a Stimpton python. Beautiful. Uh, they occur up in the rocky areas of uh, the Darling Range and right through into the Pilbara, right into the goldfields areas, yep. around rocks where they squeeze themselves into crevices. People find now that uh, if they keep them as a hobby, yep. uh, if they've got any gaps in their cages, they'll escape. <laughs> so the little escapees. <laughs> uh, little escapees. And who is your son? wearing today. <laughs> it's not a, not a designer, but it almost looks that way. What, who's this snake? It's a carpet python. Carpet python. Yeah, carpet python used lovely. to occur throughout the Perth metropolitan area. Okay. Nowadays with the suburbs and the growth, they, mm. they're relegated to uh, north of the metropolitan area, south and east of the metropolitan area. Okay. So are these, are these guys nocturnal? Or yes, they? they are. Okay. So that's probably why we're not sort of seeing them zooming no, around the suburbs. We're not going to scare no. anyone. <laughs> no. Okay, no. fantastic. And I've got a little critter here, a little bobtail. Can you tell us a little bit about this guy? The bobtail. Now, yeah. that was the first lizard uh, that got me interested in reptiles. Okay. I remember when I was a kid walking home from school. Yep. Uh, new suburb and uh, past that. And here's a a lady swinging a shovel at one of those poor critters. Okay. And I hopped the fence and uh, oh no. picked up the bobtail and yep. told her off. Good on you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Excellent. Well, you know, they are beautiful and, and a lot are. of people are a little bit scared of them, but they there's do. no reason, is there? No. Now, again, you were in the media recently about you spotted a two-headed bobtail. Now, what happened with that little guy? Uh, we, it was over 12 months ago now. Yep. Um, we got a phone call to go out to Coogee okay. to pick up this two-headed bobtail, and okay. normally we don't drive to Coogee because yeah, it's an hour away. Right. But because it was two-headed, mm. um, I decided we'd go and get it. Yep. And it was actually more than two headed, it was a Siamese. That's unbelievable. Uh, six legs. Six yeah, legs? Body and a half. Yep. Um, and we brought it back home, and it lasted 11 months. Right. Uh, it now belongs uh, at the West Australian Museum. Okay. Uh, that's where it is now, it resides. Right. Wow. Um, but it was... Something yeah. that we'd never seen before. I bet. You, know, <laughs> you don't very, see that normally. Very different. You know, we had an x-ray. Um, mm. you know, the spinal cord joined together. Yep. Uh, it had one had, it had its own heart. Right. It had one lung on the uh, just the body side yep. of it. Yep. But unfortunately, it, it passed on. And, yep. Yeah. Shame. <laughs> very much a shame. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks for telling about that. us about that. They're quite yeah. intriguing little animals. Now, I know that you guys recently received a grant for a predator-proof fence, and you'd like some help. Can you tell us a bit about that project? Well, the, um, we've got about 20 acres we're trying to fence off, Yep. Um, which is all natural bush. Mm. We've got a total of 23 okay. uh, acres. Um, we've got... Um, Got all the wire and all the rest of it there to put it up. Okay. We just need the uh, the manpower. Just need the manpower. Just need the manpower right. to to help put it up, and then hopefully we can get the department on board to right. use it for, yeah, you know, endangered animals or you know, species that are coming in. All right. Well, look, I know that we've got a lot more to talk about, and I think we'll definitely have to have you guys back on to talk about um, how the project's going and a few other bits and pieces. But thank you very much for coming on the show today. We really appreciate it, and thanks for bringing on these beautiful little guys.
Guys, if you'd like more information on the West Australian Reptile Park, go to our website at thecouch.com.au. Thanks for joining us. Until next time, keep it wild.